Hi, Gary Madsen at UTV Servicer. We're working with a 2017 Polaris General. I'm doing the suspension package, the stage one on my website here. So we're gonna set up the suspension so it's properly set up for this General. So number one on my package is set tire pressures. I know you think this is pretty minor, whatever, but I'll tell you what, I've seen multiple ones that roll over, whether it be the General or whether it be XP 1000, and I get it in the shop and there's four pounds in the one tire and there's 14 pounds over the right rear tire. So when I say air pressure is critical, if you're doing 50 miles an hour on a dirt road, and you go into a slide and you've got four pounds on one and you've got 12 on the other, it's not gonna react the way you want it. So you wanna get these tire pressure set up first. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Look for your, let's find out what, these are the general. We have the bed off for one reason, for purposes of being able to see what we're doing here. This will be an easier show. Uh, 18 pounds on the rear. 10 on the front on a general. So, checking out the, there's 14 and a half pounds. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it up factory spec. 10 pounds. Okay, so now we've got 10 pounds up front, 18 pounds on the rear. Now we're ready to go on to our next step, which is our ride heights. Now we're on to our second step. We're gonna set the ride heights. Ride heights on these vehicles it don't matter whether it's a general, uh, XP 1000, your turbos, ride heights is everything on these things. Polaris has a specific ride height and when you get on the spec you'll see the ride height. So that they had say plus or minus an inch so you don't want to be any farther out than the plus or minus an inch. I don't want to be out at all. I would much rather see my ride height where I'm at. It's where it's all designed, it's all the arms are designed that way. It's, your, it's where you get your ground clearance. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure this right now. So we're going, okay, at the bottom here, right to the bottom there, here's our right height. This one's actually pretty close. We're at about 11 and 5 eighths. 12 is spec. So this, this rear is actually within spec, but it's, a half, it's almost a half inch low you're losing ground clearance on a half inch and on these rigs, it's pretty important. So we're gonna adjust that. Let the, we'll go to the front, measure the front right height. So where we're doing on the front right height is on the back mount for your control arm. This one is at 10 and a half inches. So we're an inch and a half low on this ride height for this general. That's even out of Polaris specs. Different possibilities can cause the ride height. One of them is they get set from the factory. They're, they just put them together, they bowl them on, they throw them out the door. Then you guys start adding everything in the weight and obviously that's a factor. But you've got to get your ride height set. So that's what we're going to do today. We, to get the ride height set, you screw down the, onto the tender spring, which raises the vehicle. And this one we're going to go up an inch and a half on the front about a half inch on the rear. We're gonna get 12 inches of ride height, front and rear. So that's our next step. We'll go to the rear to, for easy show. All right, just a quick explanation on these springs that Polaris puts out. Everybody thinks that this spring here, it's all, it's gone junk, it's collapsed. These things, the tender springs on these and all your XP1000s, all the 900s, they collapse. That's what they're meant to do. I've measured these several times and they're about a 60 pound spring on some of these. That's gonna collapse immediately. Its main purpose is to keep everything tight when you go into bumping out, you've got nothing come start banging around and it stays in place. So you'll notice that these springs are collapsed. It's supposed to be. So when we're setting the ride height, we're gonna loosen this. I'm gonna crank this down and that's gonna raise our ride height. And so this, we want this collapsed. And especially, so, so before I ever do this, if you've ever had it up on a jack and it's, the suspension is loosened, you'll go back on it. You have to go seat these springs 
So you have to go drive down the road, hit some bumps. I have a perfect spot in my street that we can hit the bump, come back, and it settles. I've done them where you just take them off the jack, bounce it up and down, set it, and find out I'm an inch too high because I didn't go set, settle it down. So each movement, I'll have to go out and settle this down. All right, here we are. I've got the back end jacked up, getting it ready to adjust our spring height. Now, if you noticed, there's the spring, the tender spring, after it's jacked up, it has plenty of space here. And remember, this thing was completely collapsed down under load. This is not a true dual rate spring setup. If you buy a true dual rate spring setup, which I highly recommend, they will look similar to this from that one that's sitting down on the ground. That's why your collar sits there so it activates the bottom spring when you go to hit the bigger bumps. This is, this is meant as a tender spring only, so you can see now that how far that has opened it up. Now we're gonna adjust the shock. I'm at, we're gonna go and get about a half of an inch on this side, so I'm gonna go down about, I'm gonna start with three, three turns. And you can see this Polaris tool is, that's the one that comes in your glove compartment, everybody's got them on their machines. And it's not the best. Almost moved that. All right, I'm gonna, I can move it manually. There's one turn, I've got it painted yellow on there. All right, this one's able to do this, I like this. There's two turns, I've got the yellow mark. There's three turns, okay? So I'm gonna start with three turns, both sides. Got the, get this, yep, okay, I can rotate it. This is a nice way. If you can do it this way, it's obviously better. Rotate the whole assembly. There's one turn. There's two turns. And there's three turns. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to the front. We're only a half inch off here on the back. We're an inch and a half off the front. So if I want to get, if I went three turns to get a half inch, I'm gonna go almost nine turns on the front to get the same thing. Uh, not gonna show you the fronts. It's basically the same thing. It's just harder to get into. Adjusted the springs, we've got our 12 inches of clearance now. We've basically gained a half inch on the back, an inch and a half on the front, so we probably gained a full inch on a ride height, which is huge in the mountains. I mean, you go for a two inch lift kit, well, we just got half of that setting these springs up right. All right, so now we're checking the nitrogen in the shocks. Again, you gotta have this tool to do it. There's a special tool. This one's sitting at about 115 pounds, and the biggest thing with nitrogen, you're stopping the cavitation of the shock, which means you're, tr you're stopping the air getting the shock, and that's what causes the shock to really fade out, especially after long, hard runs. Now we're on to the line in the front end. When I've got the toe plates. These are just good old race car toe plates that you can buy at any, any speed shop that they have. So what we've got here, we've got 61 and a half inches up front, 60 and 7 eighths inches on the back. That means we're towed out 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, on the dirt, you probably wouldn't notice it, but you start running out on pavement, you're gonna wear the tires out and it's gonna wanna wander all over the street. So, factory setting, a lot of these guys say an eighth inch towed in, I like to be straight up. I always run my race car straight up and you know what, I'm going down the straight and road, I think straight, in line is the best way to do. So now I'm gonna adjust the toe to get even mounts, but the steering wheel on this thing is perfect. So in order to not mess up the steering wheel, I have to do each side of the tie rod ends the exact same amount of half a turn, three quarters of a turn on both of these. Okay, so now we're gonna take it from being towed out 
I'm gonna get it to where it's straight up. All right, now that I've got it aligned, I've got 61 and an eighth on the outside here, 61 and an eighth on that front here. It's perfectly aligned going straight down the road. Now we've got our suspension set up where it ought to be. We've got a ride height set. We've got our alignment set. Got my shocks all charged up. Air pressure's right. This is what this is set up so we're Polaris suspect. Now, talking about the ride heights. When you go larger tires, no, measure your tires, even though it says it's a 30 inch tire, it might actually be a 28 inch tire. Measure it versus the actual original tire. If you're an inch bigger on the tire, you've only gained a half inch. So if you put in an inch bigger tire, your ride heights need to be a half inch higher than stock. So that's what you do to get, if you have larger tires on, add the difference in.